And uh, probably highlighting that was the memorial service for Pastor Jack Hayford. If you uh, didn't watch it, I would encourage, I'm sure it was recorded. It was just amazing to see what God had done in his life and what he allowed God to do. So many people who gave tribute to him for what he had done. Some of the strong ministers in our country, people like uh, Robert Morse, Tommy Barnett, Bishop Ulmer, and Bill Johnson are just a few of people who believe that they have been where they've been partially because God used him so powerfully in their lives. And if you've been around here any length of time, you know that there's a very direct tie to LifeBridge Church and Pastor Jack because in 1955, 1956, I believe it actually was, is when uh, Pastor Jack and Anna entered into their first pastorate, which happened to be Fort Wayne, Indiana. And uh, how God used that, and then how He's used it in our world. Yesterday, the day was actually already there for me a little bit for our men's breakfast. Uh, Richard, that was a powerful testimony. And in the next few days, we're going to actually have that up on the resource page on our website of amazing healing. Just stand up, Richard. This man, at one point, had 5% of his heart functioning. Was on transplant list and had major stroke and stroke after stroke. Had to be removed from the list. But Dr. Jesus healed his heart. It's a remarkable story. Thank you for sharing that yesterday. As he was sharing yesterday morning, I felt the Lord speak to me. I'm real careful with saying God said this or that because I've seen so many people abuse that. But I can tell you, I I knew the Lord was speaking to me. And he said, uh, I want you to let go of your pride this morning. It's a nice way for God to greet you in the morning. He said, you need to ask these men here to pray for you today. It's hard for me. Because if you've been around here any length of time, you know I think there's another book in the Bible called the Book of Hesitations. And one of my favorite verses out of that book is Suck It Up, Buttercup. But God said to me, I need you to open your heart to the men of the church and ask them to pray for you this morning. And I did. As the day started on and I thought about Pastor Jack and the service for him made me begin to think about there's been a lot of voices God used in my life probably one of the most powerful voices in my childhood spiritually and an anchor in my life was my mother. Amazing, godly woman. Never spoke in tongues once in her life. I'm sorry if this messes with your theology. She's probably the most spirit-filled person I've ever met. Amazing. Huge impact in who I am because of who she was. But there's been three men who've had powerful influence in my life. And it's kind of the whole thing of uncommon friends. It just had to be God that these connections came. All three of them in the last 40 or 50 years have been well known in their denominations and in the whole world of renewal and the whole charismatic Pentecostal world. 
And when I went through devastation as a young minister and was found myself divorced out of the ministry, God sovereignly placed me in a church in Irving, Texas, Calvary Church with Pastor Don George. Pastor George, for many years, was an executive president for the Assemblies of God. He served on the PTL board in its day, served on Oral Roberts board, multiple places where he was known both inside the Assemblies of God world and outside the Assemblies of God world. And I ended up there, and in a very short time, he gave me the opportunity to be the single adult pastor. So it was really he who God used to restore me to ministry. And then when I landed in Florida, went to First Assembly there in Fort Myers, and just a year before, Pastor Dan Betzer had taken that church as the pastor. Pastor Betzer for many years was known as the radio voice of the Assemblies of God because he did a daily radio broadcast that went all over the world that was the official broadcast of the Assemblies of God. Served for many years as an executive presbyter as while he was pastoring the church in Fort Myers, was also the assistant district superintendent in Florida. Became known for missions and spoke all over the world regarding missions. And it was under him, I spent 11, 13 years there, 11 years directly working with him and under him. I ended up being his senior associate. And... He actually helped establish the platform for what ministry looks like for me. God used him in a powerful way within my life. And then came to Fort Wayne, Indiana. God ended up opening the door for LifeBridge Church to be formed. And I'll never forget sitting in Cracker Barrel with Joe and Diane Ruggiero. And Joe said, have you ever thought about the church being foursquare? And I had, ironically. But it just encouraged me. And, and then found out that Jack Hayford had just been made the president of foursquare. And that his first pastorate was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. As a matter of fact, the second Sunday that he was in Fort Wayne was the Sunday he made the decision he was supposed to be here and this was where he was supposed to pastor. Ironically, that day, he was holding services in one room in the YMCA downtown and Pauli e. Paino held the first service of Calvary Temple in another room on that same day. In 1956. I was just with Paul Craig this week and we talked about that. And so Jack and Anna pastored here for five years. Then God called them back to California. And I fully believe this. I, I told him that and he, he agreed with this. I believe they planted a seed when they were here now over 60 years ago that fell on the ground and died. And that life bridge is now the fruit of that seed they planted. There's a very strong connection with that. We're in this series of going the distance. And you know, at the time, Pastor Grace and I really pray through what to do with series. And I've got to tell you this, most of the time, God speaks to her heart, and I just feel a confirmation of what we're supposed to do with these series as far as the titles and kind of the themes, and then it just kind of grows from there. We started doing Going the Distance. I didn't think about where it's taken us, nor had a development happened that has since happened of this opportunity for me to serve as a regional pastor with Foursquare. 
But I believe more than ever this concept of going the distance is so important for us personally as a couple and for us as a church. The theme verse through this whole series has been, but those who entwine their hearts with Yahweh will experience divine strength. They will rise up on soaring wings and fly like eagles, run their race without growing weary, and walk through life without giving up. Had someone who's very dear to both of us that does some coaching with me, Sally, this week I was sharing with her some of the vision I feel like God's given me for what's supposed to happen with this region. And we got to the end of the conversation and Sally said, I want to ask you a question. She said, where did all this your thinking come from? I said, well, God. She laughed and she said, I knew that was what you were going to tell me, but I just wanted to hear it. I am what I am by the grace of God. Grace and I are what we are by the grace of God. Life bridge is what we are by the grace of God. And I just really felt strongly. I had a whole different title, a whole different thing I was going to unpack today. And yesterday, and that men's breakfast was just a mess bill up day. Because the Lord said, scratch that. Because I want you to talk about what I'm putting in your heart. Because the church has got to get it. Because this church is the prayer cover for what I want to do. And that God's going to raise the people out of this church to take it beyond. It's far bigger than what I can do or what Grace and I could do together. And so I felt like God told me, he says, I want you tomorrow to just open your heart and let my spirit flow through your heart. And so I believe this is a day of consecration for life bridge in a special way. Interesting, communion was already planned to be a part of this day. But uh, you that are going to serve communion, you can go ahead and get ready right now. But I think it's very important that we do it right now. And the reason is, is because this is all about the blood of Jesus. We are what we are because Jesus went to the cross. He redeemed us. And I think as we together, and if you're not a member of LifeBridge, if you love Jesus, receive communion with us this morning. And you guys can start serving and uh, just everybody hold the elements till everybody's been served will receive together this morning. But what I want us to do today as a family, as a body, as a community, is to just receive communion as a tangible way that we say, Jesus, we're yours. We accept the redemption that you gave us individually and that redemption that's now collective in all of us. And we promise to flow out of that redemption in what we do, who we are, and what we will become. So understand that's what we're doing this morning as we receive communion together. We're releasing the fullness of who Jesus is. And we're consecrating ourselves to say, God, we want whatever you want. It's been so fun. Facebook is just a strange world. It's been so fun to watch posts and comments about what's happening in Asbury. And I've heard everything on there from, well, don't make too much of this because it may not be anything, to this is the place where God is going to move and everything has to be what Asbury is, those extremes. And I thought to myself, if for one time the Church of Jesus Christ and folks who see themselves as great sources of wisdom spiritually could just shut up, And let God talk. I can't tell you yet what's going to happen. 
I asked God yesterday, I said, so, so what is this going on? And he said to me, he said, this is the rustling of the leaves in the mulberry trees. Biblical example of when you begin to sense and you hear the rustle of the leaves that say God's moving. So if anybody asks you what's going on, that's what it is. Whatever comes out of it, one of the worst things that happened out of both Brownsville and Toronto was when everybody thought they had to duplicate what was happening in those locations. Churches split over it. Pastors got fired over it. People started new churches because they either decided it had to be what was happening there. And frankly, there were some crazy things happening in both places. And there was some amazing, phenomenal move of God both places. And it's so sad that the church couldn't just embrace whatever God wants to do. He's God. And he doesn't have to recreate Brownsville or Toronto anyplace else unless he wants to. And we don't need pastors to suddenly become Kilpatrick or whatever the people's names were. I can't even remember the names in Toronto now. Yeah, they are nuts. And they were godly people, don't misunderstand me. But I pray that today as we receive communion, we receive it with hearts and say, God, we have no other explanation than we hear the sound of your spirit rustling in the mulberry trees. And we say like Isaiah, here I am, send me. That's simplicity. And so today, what God's doing, what He's going to do, every bit of it comes out of what Jesus did on Calvary. So that's the starting point. And that's why we're going to receive communion together. Bread represents the broken body of Jesus. By His stripes, we're healed. Would you receive the bread? The cup represents the blood of Jesus. Most priceless substance ever been released. And it has the power not only to cover sin, but to remove it as if it never happened. Would you receive the cup with me? Can we take just a moment and thank Jesus? Just worship Him together. Let's do it out loud. We worship you, God. We exalt you. We magnify your name. You alone are worthy. Receive the glory. Receive the honor. We give you the praise. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, guide this morning by your Spirit. Let your anointing flow through everything that happens. We give you glory, we give you honor. In the mighty, miraculous name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture that God spoke to my heart for this service this morning is Revelation 3 8. This is from the Passion. I know all that you've done. Now I have set before you a wide open door that none can shut. For I know that you possess only a little power, but you kept my word, and you haven't denied my name. That verse was kind of a life verse for Pastor George that I served under 
And my years being there at that church were interesting years. That church, while I was there, was able to purchase property that is set vacant on a major freeway for 30 years. I love Pastor George. I remember a few years before when he made all the local media sites in Dallas because he marched the whole congregation. They got buses. They all went around a piece of property two miles down the road and claimed it for the new home for Calvary Church. Well, within a year or so, there was a uh, shopping center with a Kroger store where the church was supposed to be. What I loved about Pastor George, he didn't let that embarrass him. He didn't let that deter him. He knew that God had property on that freeway. Ironically, 30 years before, there had been an Oral Roberts tent revival on that location. And I believe God and his economy had made that land sacred for what he was going to do with Calvary Church there. And so the day came that the property was purchased. Building was being built. This was in the mid-80s. And the economy went through a horrible recession. Some of the strongest financial people in the church went bankrupt. And it looked as if the church was going to fail. I'll never forget a Sunday morning when Pastor George stood up. And he said, people are asking me, what's our plan B? There is no plan B. And he quoted the scripture I just said to you. And through just unexplainable ways, God made a way through it. Remember during that time on a Sunday, Pastor George stood up because both... PTL, some of you younger people have to go look that up, Google it. Jim Baker, Jimmy Swaggart, he was on the board of PTL. He was on the board of Oral Roberts University. He was best friends with Jimmy Swaggart. And I remember a Sunday morning when he stood up and said, I'm resigning from every board I'm on. But through all of it, he never quit believing God had opened a door that he was to continue to walk through and stay focused. He never lost the focus. He just went home to be with the Lord in 2020, October of 2020, 80-something years old. Today, Calvary Church is thriving. Probably runs 5,000 people on a weekend. God raised up a young leader who served under Pastor George for a season, and now he is the lead pastor there, and the church is thriving. Because God had opened a door which no man can shut. Here's the neat thing. God didn't just especially like Don George better than he did other people. He didn't especially like Dan Betzer better than other people or Jack Hayford. It's that all three of them were consumed with the belief that they were to fulfill what God had asked them to do, no matter what. And they were relentless in making sure that they were always seeking what is God saying next. And that's how they carried out their ministries. It's kind of strange because Pastor Betzer is the only one still on this side of heaven. He had a significant stroke a couple of years ago. And just a year or so ago, at the age of 85, he finally stepped down as the senior pastor at uh, First Assembly Fort Myers. I say all that to say this. There's been some unusual things that God's been doing. A lot of this... You've heard, so bear with me. Some of it you haven't. Some of you've heard it and some of you haven't. But I think this morning that it needs to be articulated as a prophetic sense of what God's saying for what He's doing in Pastor Grace and I and what He's doing in this church and what He wants to do in this city, in this region, 
in this nation and around the world that he has us connected to. It was so funny because Pastor Joe said to me maybe three months ago, why have you never done anything like being one of the regional pastors in Foursquare? I said, well, frankly, they've never asked me. And number two, I just don't like doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> Pastor Betzer used to say, in the Assemblies of God, we don't believe in politics, we just practice them. Because <laughs> denominations are still man-made organizations trying to carry out the work of God. And I sincerely believe Assemblies of God and Foursquare, Church of God, Cleveland, and a lot of these significant Pentecostal characters charismatic denominations that is important is that we're doing the will of God but we as people sometimes get in the way literally within a couple of weeks after Pastor Joe saying that to me I get an email from our district supervisor wanting to know could he have a conversation with me I thought well he could be firing me Or he may just want to get to know me better. Or maybe there's something he wants to talk to me about. And when you know it, the day the call came, I thought to myself, he's going to ask me to be the regional pastor over this area. And that's exactly what he did. And I knew I didn't really have to pray much. Pastor Grace and I talked. We both were fully convinced this is God do it. And so we agreed to it. Back when we were in the process of looking for someone to do next gen ministry, I realized that there is a major deal, and it's not just in Foursquare, it's all across the board in the church world today. There's not as many young people who are willing to go into traditional church ministry. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you want to lead organizations that split over what color the carpet's going to be, over whether you're spiritual enough or not, whether you're mature enough or not, or you're too old, you're too young, why wouldn't you want to lead something like that? But the truth is that I already knew there's issue. In the last few weeks, as I'm beginning to walk into this role with the regional pastorate, I'm realizing how critical that is. At the, this very moment, there are four churches in the state of Indiana, four square churches, that the pastors would retire if there was someone to fill those pulpits. And there's not. And I don't have a whole reservoir of potential people to do it. It's going to be a God thing. And I began to realize this is critical. And so one of the things God began to stir, and already Pastor Joe had been talking with us, he and Becca, with Grace and I, about what it would look like for us to have an extension campus of Four Squares University, Life Pacific University in California. What would it look like for us to have an extension campus? And God knew what he was doing because actually Pastor Joe headed up an extension campus at the church in uh, Crescent City, California before they came here. So God was laying groundwork. He was preparing the way. And I got to tell you, in recent weeks, that's burning inside of me. It's gone from just a good conversation to a passion. And I have a passion for believing that probably one of the main reasons God's asked me to do this assignment as regional pastor is because he wants us to raise up a regional training center to train pastors to serve. This region is the state of Indiana, the state of Michigan, and the greater Chicago area. Inside this region are three small towns. One called Chicago, with almost nine million people. One called Detroit, with about three and a half million people. And the baby sister of those is Indianapolis, with 
only two million people. In Chicago, there's about probably 15 four square churches, the most of which run less than 100 on Sunday morning. In Detroit, there's probably five. Indy, there is one, and I'm not even sure they're meeting right now. 14 million people that we're not touching. What do we do? How do we raise up leaders? How do we allow God to do something so that maybe if we do something a little different than how we've done it in the past, but it meets the need of the area we're going into, we do it. Urban ministry isn't going to look like ministry in Columbia City because it's a whole different world. But God loves the people in Chicago as much as he loves the people in Bluffton. And he loves the people in Bluffton. So how do we do that? What's that need to look like? And how do we raise up leaders? I've been reading a book that's just really been very helpful to me in understanding the different generations and how we think. And I've got to tell you, I'm getting real excited about Gen Z. Because do you know one of the truths about Gen Z? That, that's folks that are younger than 25, older than about 12. They want to be entrepreneurs. Well over half of them have already done some form of business. We're talking with our grandson one Sunday night on the phone through Facebook. And, and he's a teenager. And we've learned that we don't have his undivided attention when we're in conversation. That's just part of it. And I knew he was doing something. I said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm working on some tennis shoes. And I think they were Nikes, if I remember right. Nike Air, is that what they're called? Now, here's the deal. My idea of tennis shoes are Keds, where for about $30, you can have four different colors of Ked tennis shoes. First of all, he told me how much he had paid for those shoes. And he said, I googled how to restore them. And that's what I'm doing is I'm restoring these because he says, then I'm going to go out on Facebook Marketplace and sell them. My grandson made about $150 profit off of a stupid pair of tennis shoes. And to him, no big deal. I'm looking for the next ones. So he'll wear them for a few weeks, put his foot stink in them with the foot stink that was there when he got them. Then he'll clean them up and he'll sell them for big bucks. That kind of spirit is what we need in church planners. One of our greatest heroes is the Apostle Paul. He was a tent maker to preach the gospel. God, help us to raise up a generation that will be willing to be tent makers. And God will give them creativity like my grandson that they're not making, well, now 15 or 20 bucks an hour at McDonald's. It ain't as bad as it used to be. But they're making 150 a pop when they sell a pair of tennis shoes or some other creative way that they're doing business. I just believe God's going to begin to do unusual things. I believe God wants to raise up churches near colleges. Did you know Ball State has over 20,000 students in residence there? And it's not exactly a God-driven campus, just to say it lightly. Probably if we got all the drug dealers there saved and they begin to creatively earn money the way they do now, we could finance an incredible church. We're going to have to figure out a way to do things like that. There's just all kinds of things God wants to do. Now, if this sounds real disjointed today, I don't have notes. And I'm not looking at the clock. So if you weren't already nervous, get nervous. <laughs> but basically, as I think about this... I then went to Dallas for the first meeting with all the regional pastors across the country. While I was there, 
I began to feel a little bit of <coughs> sore throat right before I came home. Stayed a few days with Cecily and her family. By Friday night, I also knew there was something else going on. And I knew it was related to my heart. And I thought it was because there had been a medication change. I get home and by Saturday night, the day before Generation Sunday, Grace and I were at the ER. And probably 9.30 or 10, the doctor comes in and says, you don't have to do this. But he says, it's been a long time since you've had a catheterization. I think we really ought to do that before you go home. And again, with living the, the whole theme of suck it up, buttercup, I had to think twice. But I said, then why don't we do that? And I don't know if you've ever had this kind of procedure, but I was in the twilight zone while they did the procedure. So here they are going up a major artery in your groin, and they're looking all through like the old fantastic voyage at all your blood vessels, and you hear them talking, but you don't care. <laughs> I now have a new question for my doctors. Is there a prescription for that for every day? <laughs> but basically, long and short of that was before the night was over, I had a stent. And the unexplained heartburn that I'd been having for a couple of weeks went away. That was better. I knew I was good. <laughs> had a couple of strategic meetings on that Monday and Tuesday because I'm fine now except the bronchitis is getting worse and by Wednesday spent all day in ER and I want to tell you these last two or three weeks have been challenging I've never been waterboarded but I think I have this is going to be gross but it's a little while before lunch have you ever been around somebody who has the death rattle with their breathing because of the fluid that's building up? That's what I sounded like, wasn't it? And it felt like I was drowning. And the monitor they had me on was going off because I'm in AFib. And I told Grace, I said, I think I now know what it means to be tortured. But the long and short of this is... That's all, I'm, the bronchitis is pretty well gone. Still a little bit of issue with the cough, but that's going away. Now this week, it's already been planned. I've been in AFib for nine months. And I'm going in this week because they need to monitor the medication they're going to give me that should make a big difference with that. And so I'm believing God that's going to get all squared away. Because there's a lot that needs to be done. And I want to do it with full strength and energy. I'm telling you all that because as we were talking, Pastor Grace said to me, she said, one of the things that we've got to think about, she said, you know, everybody who teaches on spiritual warfare talks about regions that principalities and powers are assigned to. And she said, up until now, you've been assigned to Fort Wayne. And we've gotten to where we take those demons on pretty well. She says, do you realize that you've just been told that you're to give leadership over Indiana, Michigan, and in the small town of Chicago and all its suburbs? She says, there may be some new demons on the list of principalities and powers that are directly affecting. And I share that with you because we need your prayers. And we need to pray over LifeBridge. Don't anybody panic and say, oh man, this isn't a thing to be afraid of. It's to get knowledge and take authority. Because greater is he's in us than he's in the world. God's going to help us. But I want you to be aware of this because strategically this is how we need you to pray for us. How we need you to pray for Pastor Joe and Becca. For Sarah who's getting ready to come on board as pastor. All of our staff. All of our worship tech team. Us as a church, our church council, our missions council, every one of you, we need to begin to join our faith together. Because where two or three come together in his name, he's in the midst. And he gives authority that breaks down principalities and powers and strongholds. We just have to exercise the authority. And so I'm asking you to do that. Now let me try to wind this up. 
There's also another interesting thing that started happening. Most of you are aware that Pastor Grace and I have known for a long time that God was taking her back out into the marketplace. And it was God doing this. She's still co-pastor with me of this church. She's still a pastor. She didn't turn in her credentials. Just like even though I'm now a regional pastor, I'm still pastor of LifeBridge. That hadn't changed. It's just different ways that God's manifesting assignment in us. And so uh, pray for Pastor Grace because she's in a world where she's in a learning curve of a new job. I, she's smarter than she thinks she is. And so she's doing extremely well. But again, it's another challenge we're up against right now. This whole thing with what needs to happen with the Bible school here, it's huge. As we move forward as a church, there's just so many ways that God wants to move. I felt for a long time, and this one's a little scary too, because I can't prove to you it's going to work. But I have believed for a long time that there is a missional opportunity in our walls because we're parked right next to the trails. And so Pastor Sarah's chief responsibility is going to be having the coffee house open during the week, every morning. And we're going to get word out on the trail. You can begin to tell people there'll be a 10% discount if they just say, I was on the trail. And then I met with the person who runs the coffee house that's open during the week at Aaron and Cecily's church when I was in Texas. She says, you know, the other thing we do, if someone's an educator or they're a first responder or they work in a medical facility, we give them a 10% discount. They're a veteran. Well, there's this little bitty hospital just down the road from us called Parkview. Have you ever seen it? Across the street is Maple Creek Middle School, elementary school next door, plus Carroll High School is just down the road. The person I met with there gave me the information of how we're going to be able to have where you can order online just like they do at Starbucks. And when you get there, it's already sitting out on the counter waiting for you. I just believe we're going to end up having a steady stream of people going to school, going to hospital, going to the other places, and we're going to be a missional touch point. It's part of what's in the works. Pastor Sarah is going to begin leading in an area of post-high school young adults. I believe that's desperately needed for those that are in their late teens, early 20s that we have an outreach for that. So there's so many things that are going to happen. Now, that's enough, right? Apparently God doesn't think so. Because my dear friend Roger Reese, who's actually credentialed with LifeBridge under, for Foursquare as a minister, reached out to me a couple of weeks ago, and he said, Bill, I need your strategic thinking. It's a project I need your help with. He and I have already been in meetings. There's going to be more meetings. I'll unpack more of this as it gets further along. But it looks like there's an amazing opportunity that's getting ready to come that we're going to be full square in the middle of here in Fort Wayne. And uh, so that's there. Some time ago, I met a gentleman by the name of James Scott, wonderful African-American businessman. And he's put together a group of phenomenal African-American leaders who are looking at different ways to have impact in the African-American community. And this deal that Roger's talking to me about ties right in. So Roger and I have already had a meeting with James. I just see great things God's getting ready to do. I've been an advisor to Tommy Carden for over a decade. There's things opening up right now that she's asked me to help with. So I just see all these things and I think, dear God, how are we going to do it? But I'm also saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you lack wisdom, ask and I'll give it to you. Have I laid everything out? I think that's it. Oh, no. It isn't it. Shoot, this was big. God opened up the opportunity through group that I'd been involved with of pastors to be a part of the advisory team for prayer works. Which, by the way, our prayer team hosted for the first time this past Friday. It was awesome. 
And now they're asking us as an advisory team to expand beyond just the prayer works itself because there's this whole outreach now in Fort Wayne called Love Fort Wayne that was used to be the citywide movement and the GLS follow-up from Global Leadership Summit. It's now all been merged together, and there's powerful business leaders like Chuck Sherratt and Mike Packnett who are leading that organization. They've now asked our advisory team to be advisory team over anything that has to do with prayer in Fort Wayne. So... At the age where I should be coasting to retirement, my plate is fuller than it's ever been. And I don't know how long this is going to be for, probably five or ten years, before I get to sit on the front porch and chew tobacco and cheer you on. (laughs) Just said that to mess with you, I won't chew tobacco. But right now I want to do what God wants to do. And I don't believe God asks us anything that he doesn't equip us to do. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And this is going to spill over to things God's going to ask you to do as a part of this church. Things that already Pastor Joe and Becker are leading to help us begin. I I can tell you, Generation Sunday, we weren't able to be here in person, but Grace and I watched online, and we were both thrilled. I don't know if you noticed it that day, This guy knows how to preach. And then the following Sunday, this guy preached better than I've ever heard him preach, and I already thought he was a good preacher. And then Steve over here will be preaching down the road, and Steve's also, he already knows this, so this isn't kind of shocking. One of the things I'm going to have happen down the road is I'm going to hit times where there's going to be churches between pastors, and somebody's got to go preach at that church on a Sunday. We've already been talking about that. And if I have two, if, De- if Jared's not out on Destiny Rescue that day, then he'll get in that mix too. What I'm telling you is I just see so many things that are the hand of God. Pastor Jack gave the dedication uh, sermon over this church in 2007. It's on our website. I would encourage you to go watch it. Because I never forget that day we were having lunch before the afternoon service. And I saw him taking a little piece of paper that was a napkin with a pen. And he was just scrawling all over it with a pen, scratching. Back. By the time we got back to the church, this was just covered in hen scratching handwriting. And he stood up and said, I had a message prepared. And the Holy Spirit just told me to give this prophetic word over this church. I think it's so interesting because I've seen ways God's fulfilled it. But when I see what I'm talking to you about today, I think the fullness of what Pastor Jack spoke that day is getting ready to be unleashed on Life Bridge in Fort Wayne. And if you haven't, if you're not familiar with it yet, go watch that service and watch him preach. It's powerful. So here's the deal. Last week, when I realized I probably wasn't quite ready yet to be up in the pulpit, and my dear friend Espy, who is my supervisor with Foursquare, came and preached powerfully. I'm going to tell you, I love the prophetic, but the prophetic scares me. Because for every powerful prophetic person, there's ten nut jobs thinking they're prophetic. I pastor too long in the Pentecostal world. But I can't let the nut jobs keep us from releasing the real thing. And it was so sweet, because we have very trusted prophetic people in this, in this house. But it was so sweet to listen to Espy speak words over people last Sunday, prophetically. And I knew Espy didn't know what she was telling them. But I knew. I knew that what she was telling them was God telling them. And I think, isn't it wonderful that that's the person I'm working under? Someone who has that kind of heart for God? She spent a good number of years on staff with probably one of the most cross-cultural churches in Tulsa. Pastor happens to be white. But probably 70-80% of that congregation are either black or Hispanic. And it's just a powerful church. 
Well, that's the culture SB came out of. And so I think God's got great things He's going to do. So what I want to do today is I'm going to ask Pastor Joe and Becca and Pastor Grace to come and join me. And then, uh, Joe, I want you to come and stand in on behalf of your daughter. Because I want this church to pray over us. And we won't try to actually dismiss the service. But what I would like to do is have you folks gather around all of us that are up here and just lay hands on us. And then all set yourselves in agreement. And then I haven't told you guys this yet, but Jared and Steve, I want you to grab the microphone. And as folks lay hands on us and pray, I want the two of you to pray whatever God puts in your heart for what he's doing. And today, I want us to walk out of here with a determination that we're going to be everything God's called us to be as a church. And that we are going to rock this city. We're going to rock this region. We're going to rock the world to the glory of God. I've already told you four more times the amount of time of what I know. So basically, you've heard everything I know about four times this morning. But here's the deal. I'm banking on God because He knows. He's going to order our steps. I already see wisdom He gives to Joe and Becca. If you don't know Sarah yet, you're going to love her. She's incredible. And this lady is so amazing to me. And I'm so grateful that she's walking by my side. Can I, can I say something? Absolutely. You really need to pray for this gentleman next to me. He's about to enter the Grace Campbell Boot Camp of Health Recovery. So he doesn't know it yet, but he could be in some trouble. May need to be some marriage counseling. No, I do want to be healthy. I want to be strong. And I want to keep doing this because there's still a lot to be done. And it is a team. It isn't one person. It's a team. And we're going to flow through it together. And so what I today is a day of consecration. Not just of us that are up here in the front and Joe on behalf of Sarah. But also we have an incredible office staff. Melissa and Lisa are just amazing. And the other Lisa Kerner and the help that she's doing with children and youth. Our worship and tech crew are phenomenal. We had some stuff done with the lights and guy that some of you will remember, Paul Leah's son Tyler, actually is here working with the people doing the work. And I talked to Tyler and he had just hung up talking to Dave Prowse on the phone. He said, where did you get somebody that smart who knows so much about what he's doing? I said, well, he's learned most of what I've taught him pretty well. But, uh, but God's blessed us. He's blessed us with church council that's phenomenal, missions council, small groups leaders, prayer teams, all that you do, all do. And I believe it's for such a time as this because we're going to be a prototype of what God can do. That doesn't mean that there's going to be identical churches to LifeBridge, but there's going to be identical characteristics of the Holy Spirit in those churches. And then God's going to tailor them to what the needs are of that community. And so let's get ready. I don't know where God's going to get all the money for this, but He's going to need a few bucketfuls. He's going to somehow help us get our debt done. That has to happen. Pray. That's got to happen soon. And then God's going to raise up. There's things I can't tell you yet about the urban ministry, but it's going to take money. But I already know where some of that is. And God's already making ways. So, so let's just believe God and then every day pray God's covering over you because you're a part of this. You're part of this region we've been assigned to. We've been assigned to. And we're going to walk through it together. Because I read about this group of people who gathered in an upper room 
and kind of just were praying together. And then they went out on the street, and the people on the street said, these people are drunk because they're all speaking all these languages they don't know. And a guy named Peter stood up and said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. This is that which was spoken. And the power of the Holy Spirit got unleashed and it's still being unleashed. It's going to still be unleashed. We're going to see our kids prophesy. We're going to see them speak in tongues. We're going to see them pray for people and they're going to be healed. Get ready. It's going to happen. Now, I need to shut up. You need to stand up. You need to come gather around us, lay hands on us, and then Joe, you and Steve pray, and then whichever one of you is last, close the service. Hallelujah, church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Church, come on. Just join us right now. Father, we just thank you. We worship you. We bless you in this place. You are a good God. We bless you, God. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you for your sweet presence in this place right now. Thank you for your sweet presence in this place right now. Thank you for your sweet presence in this place right now. God, we bless you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for this atmosphere of expectation, Lord. We thank you for this atmosphere of a hunger and a thirst for more of you, Lord. Father, we thank you for our senior pastors, Pastor Bill and Grace, Lord. Thank you for you have not only called them, but you have chosen them, Lord. We thank you for you not only have called them, but you have chosen them for such a time as this, God. We thank you that King of Glory, it's not by happenstance. It's not by coincidence, Lord God. It's not because the stars aligned or anything crazy like that. It's because, God, you called them and you chose them for such a time as this, God. Father, we pray and we ask that you would anoint them afresh for this new season. We ask that you would anoint Joe and Becca, anoint them afresh for this new season. God, we pray over Sarah or Gary, Lord, that you would anoint her afresh for this new season, God. As a church body, we pray that you would anoint us afresh for this new season, God. Heavenly Father, we pray and we ask that you would give us ears to hear you like we have never done before, God. I pray that beginning right now, Lord God, the pastor Bill and Grace and the leadership of Lightbridge, the congregation of Lightbridge, Lord, the council, the missions council, Lord God, every single person, Lord, who calls Lightbridge their home will tune in into a, into a deeper, a deeper frequency of your voice, Lord. Heavenly Father, that we would hear you more clearly than we have ever done in the name of Jesus. That God, you'd give Pastor Bill and Grace and Joe and Beck and Sarah Gare and every person in leadership of Lightbridge a boldness, Lord God, yes. to seek you yes. until they hear you like they've never heard you before, God. Praise Heavenly God. Father, where the enemy has tried to bring in a spirit of fear when it comes to listening to your yes. voice, we rebuke that right now yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every power and principality. We come against every ruler of darkness of this age. We come against every stronghold, oh God every form of voodoo, witchcraft, sorcery, divination that has been planned and fashioned against Pastor Bill and Grace, that has been fashioned against this church. We rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah God, we pray that you would raise up a standard higher than that of the enemy, O oh God. King of glory, we pray that your consuming fire would go and terrorize the camps of the enemy right now that are fashioned against Pastor Bill and Grace, that are fashioned against their health, that are fashioned against their voice, that are fashioned against the calling that you have upon them, that are fashioned against the giftings and the callings of the Lord upon their life. Oh, King of glory, we pray, oh God, that you would send the warring angels, oh Heavenly Father, to destroy every altar yes. in the kingdom of darkness that has been fashioned against them in the mighty name of Jesus. That, oh God, as you did in the days of Zechariah, oh hallelujah, yes. you would raise up a craftsman, oh God, that would destroy every horn that has been set up. Oh God, King of glory, we pray and we ask those deep things that have been crying out for God, those uh, that sense of direction and wisdom for this new season, that they've been crying out for God, that they would begin to hear your voice so clearly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, you said that in these last days you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, oh God. And God, we pray, beginning with Pastor Bill and Grace, beginning with Joe and Becca, beginning with Sarah Aguario, beginning with the, council, the Church Council of Lifeless, beginning with the Missions Council of Lifeless, 
beginning with every person in leadership, oh Heavenly Father, beginning with every volunteer and with us as a church body, that Heavenly Father, we would begin to walk in a newness, hallelujah. We would begin to walk in a newness, hallelujah. We would have dreams and visions of, of that which you've given to Pastor Bill and Grace, oh Heavenly Father, that we would grasp that vision, oh God. We would surrender wholeheartedly, oh Heavenly Father, without any hesitation, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, I break that spirit of fear and intimidation to walk into the fullness of all that you have called us to be. Oh God, it is well with us, and we know that our Redeemer lives. And Heavenly Father, I pray in this new season, oh God, in this new season, oh God, we would walk with a boldness. Heavenly Father, Pastor Bill and Grace, go the distance. Oh, we pray as you did in Isaiah 40, verses 31, that Lord, as they wait on you, oh glory, that they would soar with wings like eagles. they would soar above any attack oh hallelujah they would soar above any voice that says they're not good enough they would soar upon anything in the natural that is saying this is impossible oh God we pray they would run oh hallelujah and we know they can run that God they would run and not grow weary that they would walk and not faint Oh God, we pray and we ask as they go the distance, equip us as a church to lift up their hands. God, we pray, plant in us a, a desire to cover them in prayer every single day. Plant in us a desire to seek ye first the kingdom of God alongside them, oh God. That we would see the fullness of your glory revealed in and through Lethbridge Church. God, we pray as a church body where we have lifted up anything that is not of you, we repent right now, God. And God, we pray that we would fall in love with you like we have never done before. Oh God, I pray that a wave of your love would saturate us even right now. God, I pray that you would bubble forth through Pastor Bill and Grace, through Joe and Becca, through Sarah, and through the leadership of life, that the waters are waters uh, would flow of your spirit in and through them. God, I pray that their prayer language would enter into a new level, oh God. God, I pray that any time of the day, whether it is early in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, whether it's in the evening, that God, prayer would just bubble forth in their spirit. God, I pray you'd give them a rhema word in this season right now, Lord God, that where they have said, Lord, that seems impossible, God, we quench that voice. Life in church right now, I just feel so strongly that we've looked at some things and we've said, God, that's impossible. But as pastor declared right now, that nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Come on, church. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we say, yes, Lord. Come, Lord. Do it now in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Father. We just worship you right now, Father. We worship your holy name. Father, I hear the words for such a time as this. Father, I pray over Pastor Bill and Pastor Grace, over Joe and Becca, over Siri and Gary, over all the staff of LifeBridge, Father, all of the, over all the volunteers, Father, in the tech, in the worship, in the coffee house, and in the children's area, Father, that you are rising up ones that call upon your name, Father, that are being risen up right now. We thank you that we are now above the danger. Father, I pray for Pastor Bill right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I speak complete healing in the name of Jesus. Enemy, you must get your hands off my pastor. You must go back to hell where you belong because you do not belong on a child of God. So you must go right now flee right now in the name of jesus i pray psalm 91 right now over this body over the staff over all the leaders over the church council father right now it says that though a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at our right hand it will not come near us so we speak that right now in the name of jesus father i also says in psalm 91 that you will send your angels to lift us up so that we will not 
strike our foot against the stone. So, Father, that is saying that you will keep us, your angels will keep us away from any harm or any danger. Father, that they will lift us up so that we can see above it all. Father, I pray for your supernatural healing right now in the name of Jesus. It's your super meeting our natural, Father. And Father, that creates a supernatural dwelling of your presence, just like what Pastor just said in Acts in that upper, in that upper room. Father, that we're seeing it all over this nation right now. But Father, we want an outpouring of your spirit and your presence in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and in the surrounding areas. Father, we pray for this region of Foursquare. We lift up the Indiana Foursquare churches. We lift up the Chicago Land Foursquare churches. We lift up all those pastors. We lift up all of the Michigan Foursquare churches and their pastors right now. Give them a, give them a supernatural strength right now in the name of Jesus. Father, that they would continue to go the distance above all else. And Father, I pray right now for LifeBridge that you are raising up armor bears to be able to lift up Pastor Bill's arms, and to lift up Joe and Becca's arms, and Pastor Grace's arms, and the other leaders in this church's arms. Father, we need armor bears to lift their arms so that they can continue to go the distance with our help, with the body, because we need the body to be able to move forward. We need the body to be able to go the distance. So we believe that that is happening here at LifeBridge. God, we believe you are moving. And I believe that there is a supernatural dwelling of your presence in this place. And as we go out the doors as well, Father, that you walk with us. When we walk into the grocery store, your presence is there. When we walk into the public schools, your presence is there. When we walk into the hospitals, your presence is there. When we walk into the corporate buildings your presence is there and we speak that right now in the name of Jesus enemy you must flee we take back what you have taken from us you have no authority over our lives we are in authority over you and we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus so father again I just pray I just speak supernatural healing supernatural strength to pastor Bill pastor grace Pastor Joe and Becca and, uh, and Sarah Regario and all the people that are going to make, God, what you want to happen here, happen. We, believe, we pray right now for the church council. Father, as they're helping make decisions, Father, that they seek you first. And we lift your name first. Father, decisions must flow through you. And we thank you for helping us do that here at LifeBridge. Supernatural strength, Father, you know everything that's going on. And we're excited to walk with Pastor as he goes through these new seasons of doing new things. I feel a new thing happening. A new thing here at LifeBridge. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your holy, precious name. And we believe that you are doing a new thing in Pastor Bill and Grace, and Joe and Becca, and Sarah, and all the staff. Be with us as we go into this week. Be with Pastor Bill, Father. Be with the nurses, yes. the doctors, everything that needs to, what they need to figure out, Father. Be with them right now. I ask that you give them strength, favor, and wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we give all of this to you. We cast all of our cares onto you, Father. We dump them at your feet. And we just say thank you. In your mighty, precious, holy, wonderful name of Jesus. Church, can we just say the name of Jesus? Jesus. We worship you, Lord. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Church, the best is yet to come. We believe it. We're excited for what God is doing here. And we pray God's blessing over you this week. We thank you for being a part of the family of LifeBridge. And we're so grateful for what you have been a part, being a part of our family to us. We love you, church. We pray that you have a blessed week. God bless you.